We live in a superhuman society. Here we go. We're back. We're about 80% yes. Of people are born with an uncanny ability. I even missed this recap. Not everyone uses their powers for good though. No, no, no. Not at all. I haven't been this pumped for a return of a show since Attack on Titan season 4 part 2. And I inherited a secret quirk called One for All from All Might. But the secret is I was already great. I was already great. We had our hands full at the end of our first year at UA. Oh yeah, it's still the first year. <laughs> What a year it was. Until it was too strong to ignore. Yeah, there's a huge darkness coming. There's a major darkness coming, and I'm both thrilled and terrified. Watching the recent OVAs, I was just trying to take in every moment of goodness and happiness that I could, because the way Season 5 ended seemed like the end of an era. It seemed like the end of an era of the heroes generally being triumphant. I mean, there were some, some sad, dark moments up until now, but the unfortunately named League of Villains is just on a roll, and they're seeming kind of unstoppable right now. From this moment. The Liberation Army recognizes Tomura Shigaraki as Grand Commander! Speaking of which, yeah. Grand Commander Shigaraki. We got rid of the term villain and expanded on the whole meta angle to be a little more inclusive. Thank you for the name exposition. Teams will be assigned to them based on our needs. Anyway. Yeah, I'm like shaking. The name's the same as this hand. A decoration. <laughs> we'll do what we want. That's so appealing. We're free. Shigaraki has gathered so much power that it might be impossible to stop him. While the heroes lost focus, Shigaraki seemed to have gained his... The quirk blossomed in the Deka City fight. Now you can obliterate not only something you touch... But right, things you can't touch. Yeah, that is just such a game changer. I don't know how they're possibly gonna avoid major casualties with this. I'll use all the power I can get to destroy All Might and his legacy. Our next fight's his last. He's got such a singular focus that makes him so devastatingly dangerous. Mixed with that quirk. A decisive battle is upon us. That's for damn sure. An all-out war between the villains of the paranormal. Oh my god, but it's so exciting. It's so exciting. They did such a good job building up every side. Oof. <laughs> Man, I can't imagine. I can't even imagine what's in store. Oh, a new opening. Hell yeah. It's more upbeat than I expected so far, <laughs> like in the manga style. I'm even afraid to watch the opening, but we're doing it. We're doing it. Where is Best Genus? <laughs> what happened to Best Genus? Terrifying. Terrifying. This trio. I also have a feeling we're going to see a lot of heroes who have sort of been on the sidelines, like uh, like Aizawa, be forced back into the you know the actual fight. I don't think they, can, they have the option of holding anything back at this point with the threat that's coming, the threat they're facing. Speaking of threats, R.I.P. Deku's arms this season. One of the genius things about the show so far is that we've spent so much time with the hero side and the kids. They've really let them breathe. You know, we've had obviously moments of unbelievable heroism and inspiration, but then also their lives as high schoolers. And as I've said before, I think some of the peaceful times have been some of my favorites. The school festival arc comes to mind. That is some of the most moving moments of the show for me in a show full of moving moments. But they've also let the villains breathe. And in a weird way, there are a lot of they already say it, likable villains. My Villain Academia was a really great touch. Shigaraki's Backstory episode, one of my favorites as well. So you really know them. You really know them and you know what they stand for. They're believable and they can't both coexist. But what I suspect and what I'm hoping for is that the clash between Shigaraki and Deku, which is where I think it'll fall, fall down to, is not just a battle of power, but it's a battle of ideology. And I think if Deku is really going to be successful, it's not just about beating Shigaraki, it's about helping him. And I think given what I've seen from the show so far, I believe that's the treatment that they're going for for Shigaraki. But there's going to be a lot of pain and heartache in, in between. It's not going to be easy. They're not going to take the easy way out. And that absolutely terrifies me. I gotta come up with something to use as a credo. Why do you need my help? Spinner and compressor in meetings with Redestro all day. Talk, talk, talk. Giren and Dobby couldn't care Suddenly less. they're corporate. And Toga's too cute to ask. Please, Sensei. So honest. And it better be inspiring. And the only thing I could think was, uh, I gotta take a dump. But was it an inspired dump? These groups specialize in different areas and are led by members of the League of Villains and high-ranking brass from the old MLA. This is all suddenly very, very organized. The only way I've been able to get a clear idea of the organization's structure is because of the intelligence skills the Safety Commission drilled into me when I was a kid. And Hawks is also in a lot of danger, obviously. The freedom of an individual reigns supreme, and the existing status quo must be destroyed. It's very wordy. A wordy, but I think it <laughs> Perfect! The future looks dire. What they're really trying to accomplish by breaking the status quo is the annihilation of every hero in existence. Another thing that's so well done about this up to this point is that what Shigaraki wants is, is pretty terrible, but like 
all good villains is not without its truth. All Might is this perfect savior, but we've seen that there's a dark side to that as well, where people end up deferring their own responsibility to heroes. There's the inspiration part of it and looking up to role models and the feeling of safety, but also kind of a, a weakness that that fosters, where it becomes expected. And in fact, it's so expected that you see how quickly sentiment changes in people based on mistakes the hero makes and informational campaigns by this side or that side. I think one of the themes that we're building towards is that heroism isn't necessarily a power or a, a group of people or a class, but more of an ideal and an attitude, Deku being a great representation of that. And it's something that happens on the individual level. Shigaraki, I think, correctly recognizes that there's a part of hero society that's a false idol that allows people to live in kind of an illusion of a perfect world and perfect safety and a lack of having to perhaps become heroes themselves in a certain sense, if you know what I mean. Though, of course widespread destruction and, and death and killing and just absolute chaos and anarchy will strip away that facade, but it's going to cause a lot of devastation and carnage. I suspect that the answer is going to be something like a hero society that serves as an inspiration without kind of a falsehood, without a lie, without the idea of perfection, where it's not the powers, but the person. You went from being a petty criminal to a one-man army, the person we needed to keep the closest eye on. But I also knew that you were a friendly guy. Yep, I love the respect for him and his powers. Gotta get you in front of Shigaraki so he knows you're legit. Seriously, kind of weird I haven't gotten to talk to him. That's because he's off getting stronger. He'll be in the mountains. Even for stronger. For four Even stronger. Whoops, that's a secret. The best people are those who help their friends. Don't you agree? Very heroic. He'd fit right in in the My Hero Ac Academia Academia crew. And far too trusting. A quiet beginning. Damn. We'll face this situation with every available resource at our disposal. First, the pros will be split into two groups. Team Endeavor and Team Edge Shot. Hero Corps students will be deployed as logistical support for both teams. Do we even have time for classes anymore? I feel like class can wait at this point. There's just too, many, too much going on. Stakes are too high. Their supporters and the Nomu, but we cannot wait any longer. If we don't act now, they yeah. will prevail. Yeah, their backs are sort of against the wall here. Heroes. The idea is to take out the entire what a squad, though. Liberation front in one sweep. Our intel states that the so much for a quiet beginning. A routine meeting. Every one of them should be Damn. <laughs> That's so stacked. Our enemy has someone with a warping power. It's so good to see their faces again, too. Um, is it a good idea for us to be this close? Mushroom Girl, the most dangerous of all. Now that they've amassed so much raw power, Shigaraki will move to dominate society. That means the Do they know how powerful he's become? Not just the school. Do they know just how, how dangerous he is? Don't you worry. We just want you to help us a little at the very beginning of the raid. The little dishonest. There's a lot to worry about. You are going into absolute war. You can handle it. Just stick a mushroom in his throat. Fair question. Well, we got Mineta, so we're all good here. Mission accomplished. The pros are relying on our brave classmates to take out as many of our opponents as possible from the mission outset. Sounds smart, I guess, but what if they end up getting their butts kicked? We've gotta have faith. Think positive. I'm with Invisible Girl for once. There's no going back. I can't believe we have info on the exact date and time of their meeting. It was here, it could wasn't it? be a trap, though. I've been preparing. Just but as you Where is Best to. Genus? We're ready, Hawks. A Hawks is a huge asset, staying with the villains. There's usually a couple on patrol, at least. Look, there's one. Uh, about that. But he's an insider. He's a spy. Liberation scumbag. They know. Why the hell am I way back here playing support? They're really like uh, delaying the Deku introduction. Please, we need to remain calm. This is a gigantic. Get uh, consistent with the hand movement. Coordination is going to be. There he is. There he is. The heroes are moving in now. That's our cue. Here we go. Start evacuating residents block by block. This is like just a My Hero Academia. Fanfic dream come it's true. Really it's everyone, yeah. He just seems a little bit, nicely. little bit too complete a little over confident. A You're the devil's pawn, and you will face justice. Damn, very cool mid card. He said there's a big work thing, so we may not hear from. A him big work thing, yeah, wow. like a conference or you know I a huge war. He think to keep us in the loop like that. Endeavor has grown. I hope this job doesn't turn out like Kyushu did. I have a feeling it's gonna be a lot bigger. You're the creator of the Nomu, and all for one's right hand man, aren't you? You're the it, devil's pawn. You will be brought to justice. Impossible! How? And you will face justice. 
I feel a lot safer having Aizawa just be here. As expected, his profile in the official registry is wrong. He does have a the quirk. instant you used erasure on this madman he aged, he has a quirk. Huh. That could answer a big question. How all for one has been alive such a long time. Super regeneration is also something the more powerful Nomo had. Nomo had that, yeah. Regeneration. A quirk that can heal. Used correctly, it becomes a cheat code that lets you escape death. Aizawa might be killing him right now. Our comrades are evacuating everybody in the hospital. We're more than prepared to fight the Nomu here. It seems a little bit too quiet. I'm on edge. I've been thinking when we graduate, we should start a hero agency. Oh, that's those right. That's right. With and those who cared for them. Do you know what they all say? It's our turn to take something away from you. Yeah, this is deeply personal for both Aizawa and President Mike. So far, there's no evidence of enemy defenses. Yeah, that's exactly what bothers me. They're just coming in and steamrolling, and it's it's just too easy. A quiet beginning, huh? There's still the issue of the mole, right? And you would just imagine that in a group this size, there are going to be other heroes that are, are playing both sides. Begging you to forgive me! No, no, this seems like a play. No! Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. They knew. They knew. What fools you heroes are. Twice as quirk. It's a double! They got set up so good. That double thing, man. That double thing, it's Playtime's over, little Johnny. You must warp little Johnny. Little dinosaur Nomu. Oh no, Johnny? Johnny got smushed. I'm guessing you're the real one! Who knows? Who even knows? And new ending! A quiet beginning, huh? Oh, this is so exciting. Oh, that's so exciting. I'm so... That means so much to me seeing them as kids and growing up. I think the dynamic I'm most excited about going forward is Deku Shigaraki together. <laughs> is, this a, is this foreshadowing of twice romance? This ending's really cool. Ooh, and a flash between the two of them. This is going to be the season of them clashing, isn't it? This is gonna be Deku versus Shigaraki. It's gotta be- Oh, Deku going the other way. What does that mean? That's very intriguing. Wow, what a- what a start. Already I can feel the difference in tone. This feels like it's gonna be all at war. Just from the first episode. Wasting no time, we just jump right into it. This episode laid the foundation for the start of this- this huge conflict that's been brewing for seasons upon seasons. But like I said, what I really want to see is- is Deku and Shigaraki. And how this larger conflict between heroes and villains represents a larger conflict in the, the ideologies of, of society and the ways that you go in terms of the ideas of having heroes as idols versus looking at raw painful truth spreading the responsibility for heroism not into a, a you know a central point or a certain group but into the hearts and minds of everyone in society i also wonder if the heroes won't get pulled somewhat into the villain's darkness because they're fighting a group of people who are absolutely ruthless and just want to see the whole society crumble and that puts heroes at a disadvantage because they're you know they're abiding by all these rules they're going to experience tragedy they're going to experience loss, it seems almost inevitable that there are going to be casualties. There's a lot of bad blood. The villains could score victory in a certain sense just by getting heroes to cross those lines. And this is a huge reach, but one thing I've been waiting for, when does Deku become independently good in a way that is more robust than just being on a side? Because I think one thing the show is doing, and Shigaraki is correctly alluding to, is the fact that hero society is not perfect. It's clear that any way this goes down, this is going to change the world. It's going to change the, the structure of society. Deku, and also some of his friends, as sort of this just resounding good from a more realized place than just what side they're on is gonna come across things they've never seen and never imagined and maybe even the the loss of a certain kind of authority you know like in a crisis like this the walls and the ground underneath them are just gonna fall away in the chaos that's the plan of the villains and they're gonna be successful to a certain extent what are Deku and friends gonna do in that vacuum I mean I think I know the answer they're gonna be great but it's gonna be pretty wild to see how they react to all this carnage it feels like a defining moment for the show and the characters. It's only episode one of season six, but I can feel that this is going to be a season unlike any other season.